Hello everyone, it's Miroslava, the founder of Artifacts Online Learning Platform. And in this video, I would like to introduce to you a new instructor at our school, Yuliana Maltseva. She is not just an artist, she is also producing her own brand of brushes. And today she's gonna guide you through the process of choosing and picking the right brushes for your watercolors. And specifically, she's gonna talk about picking the right brushes for painting uh, flowers. And uh, I know that brushes and different other art supplies are one of the most important uh, questions which um, and topics which many artists and many students of Artifacts Online uh, School come across with. And that's why we prepared this video especially for you to address these questions, to help you how to choose the right brush how to apply some specific brushes, uh, which are very common among floral painters. And in this video, you'll learn about this. So don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to our channel and to put notifications of our new videos. So, welcome. Dear colleagues, I welcome you. My name is Maltseva Juliana. I'm a watercolor artist at the Artefacto School. Today I want to tell you which brushes are best used in order to paint beautiful watercolor flowers. I also tell you which brushes are not suitable for flowers and which is better not to use. And I explain something about special brushes not just ordinary round ones, but the brush of various shapes, which will make your strokes more interesting, more realistic, and more expressive. Before this start, if you want to get more watercolor news, all the interesting facts connected with watercolor, I recommend subscribing to the channel Artefacto School. Firstly, I will show you two brushes which we can use to paint uh, the whole work. These are my two favorite brushes for flowers. But of course, they are not just for flowers. You can use it for landscape, animal art. The brushes are especially good for flowers. The, their main peculiarity is a very sharp tip of both brushes and uh, at the same time a voluminous reservoir. Even this small brush, Red Wolf, has quite a voluminous reservoir and this brush is for small details, long stems, it charges a lot of color and paint so the tip handles color longer because you lower the brush into the water less times and it is much more convenient to work than to constantly charge color, especially if we are talking about thin brushes, which usually don't have a reservoir. You always dip the brush in water. If the liner has a good reservoir, it is extremely convenient and cool. You can make all the stems, the stamens and other details with a liner which will serve for a long time. The paint will not end. What is more important is that if your liner has a reservoir, you can make a stroke at any moment. It means that it's not only a thin liner, but also a good working brush. And uh, the ideal full set of painting flowers consists of a thin brush and a large one. The peculiarity of the large brush is the classic size of 9 mm. You can use it on paper of the format A4 as well as on the entire sheet. I often do work on the entire sheet and use the brush 9mm in diameter. The important feature of a large brush is that it has a sharp tip, a very sharp tip, and a reservoir that is carried down. The 
there were similar brushes. In principle, they look like they are the same. They have the same fringe fixation and the bristle, but the difference is colossal. You can notice here these two brushes are voluminous with very sharp tips. And this one has a smaller diameter, but look at the tip that is very rounded. And at the same time, the volume of the reservoir is distributed over the entire width of the brush, which is quite even. And here, the reservoir is as if from below and the tip is very accurate. And this gives us a very important effect for flowers. We get such a cool, beautiful stroke. We can make our work more detailed with this tip. Also lead the whole story, find small details and we get such an important stroke for flowers. It allows us to close the surface by passing the tiny nuances. It's very important. You see how I'm working with it and what thin lines it gives us. At the same time, it goes into a very large volume. The brush can produce strokes of different saturation from dark and tight ones to light and watercolor. If we compare it with oh, the brush, as I've said before, without a sharp tip and a voluminous reservoir, we will get a completely different stroke, like this, a little blunt stroke, and it will be more difficult to bypass small details. The picture will be uncertain, it will sometimes fall into the wrong place, and the work will not turn out so expressive. It will be complicated to paint a thin line which will be thick enough. It is a very characteristic feature when you select brush for flowers. Pay attention to the tip and the reservoir where it is, whether it goes along the length of the brush or it is combined here completely. The brush can be made according to the same principle, but have a completely different configuration of the tuft. It is a very important point. The bristles can be made from almost any material for flowers. For example, this is the imitation of a squirrel. The brand is Belka brush. It is more expensive, but you can fold it at any time, which is very convenient. This one is a Belka mix. Both brushes suit very well. I wouldn't recommend uh, the next tufts of brush for painting. Dry and uh, fully synthetic bristles, uh, which are too rough. For instance, it is a super tough synthetic brush. It won't give watercolor strokes. You see, they become dry very quickly. You have to charge paint very often. Even if I charge more paint, the stroke dries out rapidly. And the tip of the brush of such a tough synthetic material is patchy enough. It doesn't go to one point. It also makes painting less convenient. It's difficult to put together the tip and make this stroke with a clear beginning. And here, you see? The tip is not sharp enough, the reservoir is along the brush, and we don't get such a beautiful, thin, elongated stroke. It's important to make sure that the reservoir is shifted to the bottom and the tip is sharp. 
like this. The configuration of the brush is excellent for flowers. This is also suitable. And I want to tell you about special brushes. Not only round brushes. I mean such beveled brushes. The cut may be various. Here it is plain and slightly beveled and a small angle. Here it is very elongated and the angle of the sharp is far sharper. What does it give? It gives a very interesting stroke. Like this the flower petals will be great. You can also charge two colors, one on the tip and uh, another one like this. Now I'm doing it very pastously. In order to create a more expressive watercolor effect, you can add more water. The brush is called striper. Sometimes they are called dagger. The point is the same. They may have a different width. This brush has 8 millimeters. It's a very convenient size, even classic one. If you are doing this stroke, it will turn out like this. Both leaf and petal will be great. Also, thin lines are made pretty well with such a brush. Immediately we can make textures. I often flatten the brush and uh, do something like this. Maybe some veins. If we need grass, green or texture, I often use the striper brush. And I have one more brush that is easy to use. It's unnecessary to soil your hands. The blade of this brush for texture always has such a position. It's easier to make the texture. You need to separate it as much as possible. Make the blade however you need. It's an interesting brush. It's very graphical. Who has ever faced the veins knows how difficult it is to paint them. It's all about interesting specific brush. I haven't shown this stroke of a plain beveled brush yet. You also can do interesting strokes with it. This brush is good enough not only for flowers but also for portraits because it's necessary to make a stroke from this angle. And this brush Belka is very watercolor, light, and pleasant. This is Belka Mix. Besides, I want to show you a couple of brushes which are called flower brushes. The principal use is to paint flowers. Their shapes look like petals. The peculiarity of the brush is that we get a thin stroke with an edge 
and the flat gives a white one. I've just shown you a synthetic brush. I also have a Belka one. This brush belongs to the brand Herent. These brushes are rare enough, but they are very professional, very durable. This brush is more than three or four years old, and they look new. Nothing happens to either the tip of the or the brush itself. It means they are very cool. It's possible to use a thin edge and a thick flat. The stroke of the Belka brush always turns out watercolor and beautiful with a somewhat watercolor play. That's why it has such a name, flower brush. And Classic brushes. I remember that they are sharp. The tip is sharp. It's important. And the reservoir is voluminous and shifted downwards. And we use this one for small details. Why do I recommend using a separate brush for details? You will maintain the tip of your brush for a long time. As a rule, large brushes are far more expensive. For example, we consider the cost of these two brushes. This one costs about $30 and this one costs about $10. It's almost three times more expensive. And if you use a separate small brush for details, your large brush will serve more time. You can change small brushes more often, they are not so expensive. This brush is also very enduring. It's a red wolf mark. Here there is a combination of wolf and synthetic material. It holds its thin tip for a lo very long time. In terms of an expensive brush, I would like to warn that some people often choose the brush at lower prices and then every one or two months they change their brush. In the end, it is more expensive than buying a large brush of high quality. Basically, it's important that your one good brush wraps around over time and takes the shape you need. Since often if the brush are especially cheap, they are loose. You take it and it bristles in different directions, quickly loses its tip. So I recommend getting some expensive, high quality brush rather than constantly changing them and having a lot of cheap brushes in your arsenal. Painting is a special kind of brush. If the materials you use are pleasant, the delight from work increases by much. Now I would like to give you a gift for watching this video, as promised, um, that includes materials that are necessary for work. A story about paper, about paints, about the brightness, about saturation, about how to work with them, how to choose them, and the same about paper. It's significant information, which is better to know before buying the materials. Because both paper and paints are expensive enough. It is very often possible to make a mistake and the materials will be useless. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. There will be a lot of interesting things. So now you've learned about brushes, but how to choose paper, watercolor paints and other art supplies. And you're going to learn about this in our free PDF guide. Find the active link in the description to this video and learn how to pick uh, the right art supplies, uh, how to save money on this. Yeah, so 
There we're gonna talk about the basic set of art supplies which every watercolorist needs. So take your chance, download the PDF guide and start painting.